I'm joined from Geneva by Coast Sullinger, a fund manager for Gaia Capital Advisors. Good morning, Coast. Um, morning. Let's have a look at this. If, if revenues are so low and farmers uh, can't make ends meet, why is uh, farmland pricing so high in Europe? Um, I think it's more to do with lifestyle and more to do with urbanization. Um, you know, you have a pretty high population density in Europe, and uh, basically the farming lifestyle is something that a lot of people uh, are starting to, uh, to starting to seriously consider, and that's what's happening. So it doesn't really relate to the yields, let's put it that way. Okay, okay. Now, now you're obviously more interested in investing um, in kind of large-scale commercial farms in places like Brazil, Ukraine, Russia. Are, are small European farms an attractive option? Can, can, can one make money out of them as, uh, in, in terms of uh, actually producing things rather than just deciding you want to go and retire there because it's pretty? Very difficult, uh, and a lot depends on the subsidies. Uh, as you know, I think as the gentleman pointed out, the uh, European Union has about $55 billion in annual subsidies going to farming. Mm. Um, but I, in, my, in our opinion, the European farming sector is just structurally uh, uncompetitive. I mean, the mm. unit sizes are too small. If you have 50 hectares, you're not going to be competitive with a farm that has 2,000 or 5,000 hectares in Argentina or Ukraine or elsewhere. So, you know, the UN is talking about uh, food production having to be doubled over the next 40 years to meet the rising demand. Do you think that it's not even worth trying to come up with a model that makes that work in Europe and, you know, we should simply be looking to do this in, in the, uh, the, the wider scale places overseas where there's an awful lot more land available? Well. I think in many respects, uh, Europe has already uh, achieved or is very close to its, uh, let's say, efficiency ceiling and that which is, is possible to achieve today in terms of harvest yields, let's say pulling off uh, 8 to 12 tons of wheat per hectare. In many places in emerging regions, you're not, you don't have the amount of modern equipment and modern know-how and therefore you have the opportunity to grow yields from currently two tons or so a hectare in places like Ukraine and Russia uh, up to that more optimum level. So your, Europe just doesn't offer the kind of growth that you see in many of the emerging markets. Mm. So finally, uh, Coast, do you think that uh, farmland prices in Europe are going to continue to rise even though, as you put it, um, the, it's not structurally competitive to do farming business in Europe? Um, I, I think they will continue to rise. It's really hard for me to say how much they're going to rise per year, but again, it, it really goes back to those lifestyle issues and, and urbanization. Um, the figures which I've seen, for example, uh, someone cited that you know the, the price for agricultural land in France is 5,000 euros. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, if you go to really the, the middle of France where there's just nothing around, maybe you'll find 5,000 euros. But I can tell you in many places it's as, as much as 30 or 50,000 euros. So it really depends on where you are. If you're next to a city, uh, 20 kilometers from a large town, then you know, or a city, then you obviously have higher pricing. Okay, Coast. Thank you very much.